Hey guys, it's Ingrid here and we're gonna do my November wrap-up even though November isn't over because I'm not really, not really reading right now. Um, I am doing so much for Bookmas that's gonna start this weekend and so I completely failed Believe It On. Um, I'm just gonna do a wrap-up now. If I somehow manage to finish another book in November, I'll just include it in my December wrap-up. And yeah, this month I basically only listen to audiobooks. The only thing that I've read physically is comics and manga. And that's been because I borrowed them from the library, so I need to read them in order to give them back. So let's just get into it. So I'll start off with this one so that I won't forget, because I haven't marked it as word on Goodreads. And that is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And I did not read Through the Looking Glass, so I only read half of this copy. Which is why I haven't marked it on Goodreads, but I did read the first book in this bind up, or I listened to it on audio. I think everyone has heard of this book by now. It's a classic. We follow a girl named Alice that goes down a rabbit hole and ends up in Wonderland. I liked it. I feel like I do want to read it again physically one day. Um, but yeah, I liked it. I gave it three stars. The audiobook was alright. I liked the pictures in it, and this edition in itself is beautiful. Not my favorite children's classic but one I still feel like I want to reread someday. Next was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This again was a really good audiobook. We follow Cassidy who has the ability to speak to a ghost or like she has a friend that is a ghost and her parents are ghost hunters and they get this tv show where they have to go to Edinburgh. It was good. Gave it three stars. The audiobook was good. It was a fun story, it was not as spooky as I would have wanted it to be. Like I know it's middle grade, but I still felt like it should have been spookier. I like the idea, but I honestly liked one of the side characters more than I liked the main character. <laughs> um, but I will get, probably continue the series though, because it was fun. And then there was two things that irked me in the book. The first one being in the beginning, it's very like, a lot of hate towards the popular girls. Like they don't do anything to the main character, but she just dislike them because they're popular. And I hate that kind of trope in books where it's like, oh, if there's a popular girl and she must be really mean and awful and uh, I didn't like that. <laughs> and then the other thing that I didn't like was all of the Harry Potter references because there were too much for me. I'm not a Harry Potter fan to begin with. And I usually don't mind if there's like a reference or two, like in Lara Jean, but in this one it just was a bit too much. In my opinion, I think other people would love it. So yeah, it was a really fun middle grade with not as much spook, but friendship and adventure. Yeah, it was good. I'm not sure if I said the City of Ghosts, I gave three stars too. And then the next book that I listened to, I actually found like more creepy than city of, of ghosts and that is Witchwood by the Head of Muffy. This is a companion novel to Furthermore so you can read it without having read Furthermore but I feel like it spoils Furthermore so please read Furthermore first. But in this one we follow Laylee and she is a Mordishwar meaning that she has the power of helping dead people cross over to like the other side and it was pretty dark. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it was darker than I expected because it's a male grey, but I loved it. It was so important, it was about friendship and kind of, uh, it's hard to explain, there's just so many deep emotional issues explored in this book and I really really loved it. If you like Furthermore, I do think you will like Witchwood as well. And I liked the audiobook except for one thing and it was one of the like side character, someone's mom actually, in this book. The narrator made this terrible voice decision and that really like took me out of the story. Other than that, all the other characters he did good, but that one was like really annoying and I didn't see the point of it. But I do really recommend this book. It was so beautiful, so moving. I will for sure reread this and furthermore really really liked it. So yeah, if you've not read Furthermore, go do that. If you have read Furthermore and not this, then please go do that. I give this five stars. Next, I listened to an audiobook I ended up loving a lot more than I thought I would, and that was Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. 
not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. This was so much fun. It's very, very short, so I flew through it quite quickly. I also cracked the spine, so it looks like this now. <laughs> but I loved it. Like, I used to love Winnie the Pooh when I was a kid. I've only read it in Norwegian. And so when I saw this at a charity shop in London, I picked it up and then I listened to the audiobook. And I loved it. It was so silly and whimsical and innocent and cute. And I will for sure be reading this to my kids if I ever have kids. This was so cute. I absolutely loved it. I don't think <laughs> that it was like too young for me, even though I'm 22. Like it just, oh, it gave me all of the nostalgic feels. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it a four star. But it's honestly probably more like four and a half. It was really, really good. If you read this as a kid and you want to revisit it, it's worth it. If you want to read it for the first time, it's still pretty funny. I liked it. <laughs> Give it a try. Next, I read a comic called Stone Cold. This is number eight of the Lumberjanes one. I really, really love the series. We followed this group of friends at camp where they get entangled with a lot of mythical creatures and it's really really fun and i ended up giving this volume four stars and i will for sure be continuing with the series and then next up i listened to percy jackson and the olympians book three the titans curse and i really really enjoyed this i read the first two a long time ago and i read them in graphic novel form last month just to kind of get the story going and so i picked this up and Honestly, this reference a lot of what happened in the earlier books was I, I really appreciated because it reminded me of stuff that had happened and so I liked that. <laughs> Made it easier to kind of pay attention and follow the characters. So I won't say what this book is about because it's the third one, but the first one is called The Lightning... Lightning Thief? Is that? Lightning Thief, yeah. And we follow Percy who is half human, half demigod. Wait, no. We follow Percy who's a demigod, meaning he's half god, half human. And so he discovers this and is being sent to Camp half -Blood to train with other demigods. And they end up going on quests. It's a really fun story. I don't know that much about the Greek gods. And so I'm enjoying learning about them in this setting. I also think the narrator did a really, really good job. With this was so easy to listen to and get immersed to and I really enjoyed it. The only thing I will say though was one thing that kind of irked me a little bit. In this book for some reason we stumbled upon a lot of homeless people and they're all painted as like not great people. Like really sketchy or really dirty and I just didn't see the point of that. I know that kind of rubbed me the wrong way just a little bit because I'm like don't have to paint that picture that all homeless people are like that, you know, when it's, I don't know. It irked me a little bit, not enough to, like, take me too much out of the story, but I did notice that that kept happening a lot during this book, so I ended up giving this a fourth star. Next up is a manga, and that is To Your Eternity Volume 5. This, I think, might be the lowest rated one in the series for me so far. I ended up giving it three stars and the reason why is that we kind of wrapped things up a little bit in volume four. I loved volume four. I cried so much, was so heavily invested in this character so kind of getting introduced to new character and stuff I don't have that attachment to them if that makes sense. So I'm still going to continue and I'm hoping that I get attached as we move on but just the story and the characters in this one wasn't as captivating and because I loved volume 4 my hopes was a bit higher. But in this series we follow mainly this being that came down on earth as an orb and then it learned to be a rock and then an animal and then a human and it's kind of learning what consciousness is and what humans is and it's really really interesting and you don't really know what's going on and then you also have like side stories following other characters and then they interact and it's a really really good series but this volume was a bit of a letdown for me unfortunately. Next up is a graphic novel called The Stoneheart. It's the second volume in the Name of City trilogy I believe it is. And so this series we follow a city known as the Name of City because it keeps getting conquered and so every time 
a new people conquer the city. They give it a new name, and then a couple of years later, someone new conquers and give it a new name. So it has so many different names that it's more known as the Nameless City. And we mainly follow two people, a guy that is a part of the people that are currently in power in the city, and a girl that lives on the street. And they are not the type of people you would think would become friends, but they end up becoming friends and having to have kind of the future of the city depend on them. And I really, really like this series. It takes up a lot of important topics while doing it in kind of like a fantasy-ish setting almost. It talks about like culture and where you're from and it's just, it's really, really, really good. So I'm excited to eventually get to the third one. And I gave this volume four out of five stars. Next up, we have another audiobook and that is The Lost Hide Warriors by Catherine Doyle. This is the second book in the Stormkeeper series. So I read book one earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. It's about like a magical island, but also candles with magic. Like it's a very interesting way the magic works. And we're following this guy named Fion and his sister that are going to this island to visit their grandparents. And then they kind of get entangled in this big thing that I don't want to spoil. And I honestly enjoyed book two more than book one. I felt like the parents were normal parents, if that makes sense. They're like, no, you're not going to save the world like you're a kid. Or when he's like, oh, we should do this, they were kind of like behave as rational adults and I really enjoy that because I feel like a lot of times in like fantasy books the adults would just be like oh yeah you're chosen so like we'll just go with whatever you say even though you're 12 but in this one the adults like kind of question things and they did it for good reason and they had their reasons and were I don't know it was just very how I think it would have happened if it was real, if that makes sense. So I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the friends and how like the siblings and that it's not all like picture perfect and it was just really fun. There was a couple of twists I didn't see coming, some I did, but I am enjoying the series. As I said, if you read the first one and you feel kind of mad, then I would give the second one a chance. The audiobook was also really great. So I gave this four out of five stars. Next up is probably the most beautiful book I have ever read and it's this one right here. It's called Liebe Illustra which translates to Life Illustrated. It just came out here in Norway. I got a reading copy from the publisher through my job and I really hope they translate this because it is beautiful. There's not a lot of text in this book so you can read it quite like fast but the point is more like illustrations and look how beautiful these illustrations are i think there's a hundred illustrations or something in here and it goes through the different phases of life it is honestly just the most beautiful thing ever i'm gonna look through this for years to come i am sure of it look at it Oh, I really, really hope they translate it, but if you're Norwegian, go to your local bookstore and get it because it is so adorable. Easy, five stars. One of my new all-time favorite. If you're Norwegian, pick this up. And I hope that it gets translated to other languages as well because it's so, so pretty. Next up is a book that I read the first 200 pages of physically last month, like October, and then I picked up the audio this month, November, and that is The Diviners by Libra Bray. This is a huge book. It's over 500 pages, closer to 600, I believe. And I really like this. I gave it four stars, and we follow a lot of different characters, but mainly this girl named Evie, and she's from a small town in Ohio, I think it is. And then she caused a bit of a scene there and she gets sent off to New York City to live with her uncle for a while. And in New York City, there's some very gruesome murders going around that Evie's uncle need to help with. And so it's about, mostly about like the murders, what's happening and some occult 
things and that might be happening. But it's also about the time period of 1920, racism and how the police is and how the politics are. It's really, really fascinating. And I will for sure be continuing this series. I will recommend the audiobook because when there is like some, um, what is it called, like nursery rhymes or songs, the narrator actually sings them and it was just, it added even like a more creep factor. I really, really enjoyed it. And because it is such a big book, I feel like it flies by quicker on audio. So I will try and get the other books on audio, but I think I'll take a little bit of a break because it is so big and you're following a lot of characters. I feel like you can't like read these back to back in my opinion. I feel like you need to have a little break in between. But if you like kind of spooky, occult, dark magic, the 1920s, then I highly recommend picking this one up. And now we only have two graphic novels left. And uh, the first one of them being Amulet Book 8 Supernova. This is the last Amulet book that is out so far. Not my favorite. I gave it three stars. It was good. I am excited for the ninth and final issue to come out hopefully next year. But I kind of saw a lot of the things coming. There was one twist I didn't see coming. Which is why I still got three stars because that took me by surprise. But I think it's a fun middle grade series where we follow these two siblings that move to a house and end up going through a door in the basement to this other world and having to kind of save save the world. So yeah, it's a fun middle grade graphic novel. I think this one is one that is very popular with middle grade readers, but not necessarily as good when you're an adult, if that makes sense. Like some middle grade like Witchwood, I think you get just as much pleasure out of reading as an adult, while this one I do feel like is more for middle grade readers, which is completely fine, you know, that's what it's for. But if you're older like me, then I don't think this is one that you like have to read, but if it sounds interesting, then it's, it's a solid series so far. And then the last thing that I read this month is another graphic novel. It's one that a lot of people were reading in October. It's called Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and illustrated by Faith Erin Hicks. I gave this two stars. It was not for me at all. So the synopsis I've heard people give is that we follow these two friends on their last years working together on a pumpkin patch so follow them on their last day which is not wrong but it left me with the impression that oh it's gonna be a cute story about friendship and it wasn't that it was we spent more time focusing on this character's exes and this character's crush and not that much about their friendship and so it was too much romance and exes and crushes and things that I really didn't care about because we haven't been spending that much time with these characters. Like I didn't really care about why her exes were her exes because they only got like a page each. So it just was not for me. But I do still think that if you tend to like YA contemporaries you might like this. Like it's not awful graphic novels by any means. But after reading Heartstopper, which is also YA Contemporary, I thought, oh, maybe I do like YA Contemporaries. And I think I'm still very picky when it comes to them. And unfortunately, I went into this expecting more friendship. And it was more centered around, like, love and ex and all that kind of stuff. And so it just wasn't for me. Still one that I wouldn't not recommend, but just not one that was, you know my cup of tea. So before I finish this video I will just quickly talk about my two current reads. One of them being Frostheart which is a group book for the Believe Fun. and yes I have probably a hundred bookmarks and I still use a receipt as a bookmark but I'm only like 50 pages into this and this has been my number one priority this entire month. I think you can tell how little time I've had to physically read. I really like the first 50 pages. This is still going to be a my priority as a physical read. I most likely won't finish it until December, but I won't start another book until I finish this one. And I really do think that I will like it. 
And yeah, so far, so good. I will hopefully talk about this in my December wrap up. And then the next one I'm reading and listening to, so this one will probably be read a little bit faster. And that is Percy Jackson, a book for the Battle of the Labyrinth. And I'm almost 100 pages into this audio. It's great. It's fun to be back with these characters. After finishing the third one, I just really want to keep going. So I thought, why not? Liking it. Hopefully we'll give you my thoughts on this one in the December wrap up as well. And I also quickly wanted to say the reason why I'm not listening to this is because it has beautiful illustrations. If you can tell. And when a book has beautiful illustrations, it makes me want to physically read it. And so there is an audiobook for this, but I don't want to listen to it because there's so many illustrations in it, I'd rather read it physically. So that was it for this wrap up in this video. I'll have all the books I talked about in the description if you want to read more about them and check them out. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss bookmints that are starting this weekend. I hope you enjoyed and let me know in the comments what you read in November. If you are participating in the Believeathon, did you make it to Frostheart? Let me know if you loved it. I really hope I do. <laughs> when I finally get around to finishing it. I've had so much fun with reading this month. I just wish that I had more time. So I'm really, really hoping that there will be a run to a blue fun. Crossing my fingers. But yeah, that was all I had for this one. Social media is in the description as well. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.